50 seconds. You're all right. You're all right. Crap, these things don't reach either. All right, I'm just gonna go without. I'm fine. You don't have a cut. You don't have a cut to play or anything, do you? Yeah. We've had um, our headphones. One of a set of headphones here went uh, crash boom. They completely broke over the weekend. There's probably about 15 people that walk in here over the course of uh, over the course of a weekend. So who knows? But. They done been broke. I think I already threw them away. Oh. You want to do a GoFundMe? <laughs> we'll just go live. May hey, maybe Reed will buy his headphones. Oh, well, there you go. Drugs on Richmond's Classic Hits. 1017 The po All right, thanks for being a part of the Wake Up Call. It is uh, 642. 38 degrees here in the Whitewater Valley. Uh, Jeff Lane, did you have any fog this morning? Did you have any problems with fog? Not until I got really close yeah. to the station. Okay. All right. I was wondering about that. Lots of people watching today. Thank you so much. We're on Facebook Live. And I mentioned earlier that um, it, it, one of us looks like we know what we're doing. He's wearing the point shirt. He's got the <laughs> headphones on. The other guy looks like he just got off the plane in London. Uh, <laughs> or from London. Bengal shirt on, no headphones. What what happened? I don't know. I feel naked right now. <laughs> well, so naked. well, you're not, or we wouldn't be on Facebook Live anymore. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what are you talking about? Our viewership would double. <laughs> okay. All right, fine. Um, <laughs> uh, so, good weekend? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very good. All right. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. That's supposed to be your. That's supposed to be your time to say how was yours. No, I was just about okay. to. All right. Just I was going to say. I'll wait. Welcome back from Houston. Thank I you. hope that you had a great yep. time with great your time. lovely fiance. I did. Thank you very much. So I met. I met up with Greg Kramer and Chris Colger. Um, they had the bed butler uh, that they had an idea. They right. have, they're mm -hmm. both high school alums. They have both moved to Houston, and have started a 3D printing company. And I got to stop by. Casey and I uh, went and saw they're in this wonderful, cool little incubator on downtown. And um, they are, they both had just huge smiles on their face. They're making 3D uh, materials. Uh, one client is free to lay. Zero waste, of course. They're making modifications to their uh, systems in order for chips to get stuffed in bags quicker. And they are one of the only places that has a product that is FDA approved. So that's a really cool thing, wow. and they're just on the cusp, I think, of, of making it big. And so uh, thanks for, the, for Chris and for Greg to let me uh, hang out with them for a little bit. That's that was awesome. pretty cool. Yeah, and they got to have their, Chris can bring his dog to work every day. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, so I told him, I said, if you make it big, let, <laughs> let me know. I'm going to need a job. <laughs> there you go. All right, so let's talk about uh, some news. All right, uh, I have tried and tried, and I've gotten no response from Reed Health or Forest Tales about what was our lead story on Friday. Uh, but I, I, I do feel like I've got a pretty good handle on the details of this. Um, and I don't know if you call it a partnership or, or a collaboration or, or exactly what you call it. Um, those close to the situation have, have said that Reed is now uh, paying $1.85 million to Forest Hills. Uh, to fund 50 social memberships for doctors and other high-level medical personnel for 10 years. Um, the Forest Hills board would expand by two, and Reed would get to pick those two members. The current pro shop will be converted to a fitness center. A new pro shop will be built kind of up there by the circle. Much of the remaining money will go to the swimming pool and tennis courts. Little, if any, money will go into the golf course itself. All right, so uh, I we we've known about this in the works for a few months, right? right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, not, this is not news to Jeff and I, and uh, perception is reality. So first things first, Forest Hills, do we know that it's a done deal? That, that's something we, Forest Hills or Reed, neither one have to talk to us. Right. I get it. Right. But if it's a done deal, it's a good deal for Forest Hills, right? I mean, it, for Forest Hills, this is a, you cannot walk away from this offer. No, Forest Hills was broke. Okay. And, and All right. by, by many, many accounts. Right. And so this is not a bailout. We don't know what the term of the relationship is, but Reed's going to get a couple of seats on the board. Reed's going to take over dining. They have uh, tremendous upgrades. So what? if you talk to the people at Reed, 
I think what they would say to you legitimately is we're having a hard time recruiting doctors. We need doctors. We need their spouses. Um, we need them to have their exclusive club. We need for them to feel like they have a place where they can go. They don't have to mingle with the commoners. Okay? So that the presumption is, is that all doctors want to be members of private clubs. And I don't think that that's... A, all right, but maybe all the doctors that Reed's trying to recruit would like to be members of private clubs. So I've been thinking about how to approach this, because I don't want this to be my last day on the radio, but Reed could call up our manager and shut us down in a second, right? I mean, shut me down, maybe not you. You're 13-time news story winner of the IBA. You won again on Friday, too, by the way, right? Uh, or Thursday? Not, yeah. You won a, a top news story again. Anyway, I totally get Connorsville. I get why they took over Fayette Regional. That is a healthcare move. I get the fact that they looked at the west side and said we could put something where the county market building can go. I don't quite understand Eaton, Ohio. I don't quite understand the need for them to build a daycare. I mean, I, I get what they're saying. I understand their points. And to be fair, Reed has subsidized a lot of nonprofit organizations. I mean, the community benefit program that Angela Klein runs, that is, that is a huge program. They offer a lot of money. There are certainly some organizations that could not operate without Reed's uh, dollars. But why does the city government, why does the county government, why do all the communities that have Reed facilities, how come they don't get a benefit? How come Reed's not paying taxes? Reed needs to stop saying they're nonprofit. And they need to do that and legitimately come to the table and say, look, we get it. We are doing these things in order to be a healthy hospital. So then do it. Because here's what they can't do, Jeff. They, Reed cannot look me in the eye and tell me that I'm getting the best price for this MRI that I'm getting. They, they can't do that. Because if they could... They would say, you're getting the lowest price that we can give you because we have cut all of our expenses. They've not done that. They do tremendous work in this community. I really appreciate the role that Reed plays as the number one employer in town. Don't give Forest Hills $1.85 million and then tell me that you're nonprofit. You just can't do it. And I'm and I'm sorry about that. And if you know if this is the last day that I'm here, <laughs> I, fine. But please tell me where I'm wrong about that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Good thoughts. All right. Fine. That's that's not a that's not a hard rant, right? I mean, that's a that is a legitimate question to me. How come the city government and how come city taxpayers don't get the benefit of not being a member of a private club. How come, how come the rest of us that aren't Forest Hill members, how come we can't get that benefit too? So I'm, I'm asking Reed to write a check or, or a payment in lieu of taxes or, or please just become for profit and let's just, let's just take it all away and forget all this business about nonprofit. I just tired, tired. All right. All right. Um, moving on now. <laughs> Wait, we're out of time, Jeff. We're out of time. So, no, uh, the fire did, fire did some heavy damage to a Wayne County home overnight. It was on Salisbury Road near Guard Jackson Road, about $30,000 in damage done. Don't know the cause yet. They'll be back on the scene there today to look into it. Damage is set at $30,000. And uh, I'll, I'll leave you with this. This I found interesting. Richmond has again made a national list, one of those rankings that we talk about a lot. Sometimes we talk about Wallet Hub. This one, though, comes from smartasset.com, right. which is kind of a financial website. Um, and what, it's, what it did is it said, okay, let's say you, you had a million dollars if you wanted or saved it or whatever, and you wanted to know how long that's going to last you. You don't yeah. have any other income. You're just living off this million dollars. Well, according to uh, Smart Asset, Richmond ranks first in Indiana and fourth nationally for making it last the longest, according to the website. If you lived in Richmond, a million dollars would last you 22 years and three months. I like that. That sounds good to me. But what does that really say, right? I mean, what I wonder what all the things that take into account. Um, you know, we can have fun with it and say it doesn't last 22 years if you have sports betting in Richmond. <laughs> yeah! Um, but, 
<laughs> but you know, it, it is one of those things where um, you could probably make that work wherever you are. It depends on whether or not you owned real estate. If you owned your house, I think that plays a major role into that number. Right, right. And it, and it goes along with another study, and I forget who did this one, but it said that uh, Richmond has one of the lowest costs of living in the country. So those two things kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. But that's cool. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, our question of the day is all about um, your top three favorite Halloween candy. Now, we've done this before where you, you give your, your top candy, uh, but in all honesty, it's coming up with the second and third ones that, that becomes the most difficult. So for me, it was Reese's, then I'm going Twix and Kit Kat. For whatever reason, I need that cookie wafer in there to feel like it's a little healthier. Yeah. I know. All right, I, so I where are you? you? My, my top one is one that you probably aren't going to get a lot. My, my, my second and third, my second would be Mounds. I love coconut. Oh, yeah. And my, yeah. my third are, are I, I like Reese's Cups too. But my number one thing, uh -huh. those straws filled with sugar. The, the sour sugar pixie sticks, is that what they were called? The, they they are called pixie sticks, and no, I would not have guessed that. Oh, man, those things were righteous. Yeah. The Smarties were pretty good. You felt like you got your money's worth with those little Smarties, because yep. you just eat a disc, let it melt, then you eat another <laughs> disc, and let it melt. <laughs> and those folks on Facebook Live are like, eh? <laughs> So, <laughs> all right. Do um, you think we got any trouble with the Reed thing? Do you think we're in trouble? I hope not. I, I, I mean, you know, it's a... I think largely mutually beneficial, and people are going to have yeah. you know, people are going to have the reactions. and And honestly, I I wish I knew more about it. I wish that one of the two entities had reached out and, and responded, but um, so far they haven't. They they need to just I mean just for transparency's sake, but they don't have to. They could just tell us to go take a flying leap, and I get that. I I get that. So do I get to know? Well, here's a question: What happens with the elks? Right. The, what does the Elks get? Okay. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, you know, I, that's that bothers me uh, somewhat too. You know, we got to go. All right. Um, I could just get myself in more trouble, and I don't <laughs> need more trouble. Thank you, Jeff Lane. See ya. Did you and I do some radio. Good stuff. All right. Bye. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, G. Lawman's going to be coming up in just a little bit. We're going to be talking about some stuff happening to Boris and Reeves. And, um, I don't know. I don't know. Welcome back, right? <laughs>